Good evening, welcome to this special edition of Six News from the Olivio Tourist Park in Canberra. I'm Leonardo Puglisi. Leonardo Puglisi was just 11 years old when he founded Six News. Overnight on Tuesday, Boris Johnson became the leader of the Conservative Party and the British PM, defeating Jeremy Hunt in a landslide. Leo is now 16 and his online streaming news channel has a team of around a dozen reporters. Some are as young as 14. We're going to be covering all of this. We want to get first to our team of reporters. We, of course, have Aidan Edgecombe, Stuart Jeffrey, Maggie Perry and Roman McKinnon. And we'll be going to Roman first. He is in Moreton Bay. Where there but are... Six News' whole operation could be in jeopardy because some very powerful people think some of those reporters are too young to be on social media. From Schwartz Media, I'm Ashlyn McGee. This is 7am. There are a number of campaigns running at the moment, concerned about the effect social media is having on young people. From exposure to harmful content, to mental health issues, cyberbullying, depression and even suicide. And the proposed solution is simply to ban anyone under 16 from social media for their own protection. But could it even work? Today, Chief Anchor and Managing Director of Six News Australia, Leo Puglisi, on what he thinks of the idea and why even the Prime Minister seems to be backing it. It's Tuesday, May 28. Leo, you've got a big operation running there and underage labour's a pretty big part of it, isn't it? It is. It is, um, you know, a pretty big part of it and I'm glad no authorities have caught on yet. Um, but uh, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty good newsroom that we've got running. You know, about a dozen people um, based right around uh, the country, and uh, also one in in Toronto as well. Um, and you know, we've been going for about five years now, where you know we've had people uh, in in Perth, in Tasmania, in Victoria, a lot in New South Wales and Queensland uh, as well. And um, I think we've been growing, you know, pretty steadily. We've been managing people. You know, some younger than me, some people 13 and, and others who are, you know, doing their university studies. And, you know, we've been going for long enough that multiple of our reporters are actually at the age where they're now able to be picked up by major networks. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of poaching, but uh, it is it is a pretty good thing. And I, I'm, I'm really glad to see it happen. But there's a bigger threat to your existence at the moment too, isn't there? Talk to me a bit more about that. Yeah, so it's it's this new proposal that we've seen, and again, it's kind of a um, it's a it's a broad proposal in the sense that the restrictions and the details that haven't all been ironed out and and unified. Uh, but the basic thing is a restriction on the age for social media for kids. Now, obviously, present day it is thirteen on most major platforms that I've seen. Right, um, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. I believe they're they're all thirteen. Facebook and Instagram the same. Um, but from what we've heard, the government is talking about extending that to 16. Now, it isn't officially a federal government proposal. This is this is the kind of weird thing. Our next guest is very important to a topic that we launched yesterday. The initiative called 36 Months. We need you to go to 36months.com.au. We want you to sign the petition, the petition that says we need to change the age that kids can join social media from 13 to 16. We went through the statistics. The Prime Minister has fully endorsed it being up by 36 months, which would take it to under 16. Prime Minister, could you go to 36months.com.au and sign the petition for us? Uh, I can't sign petitions because they're to me. <laughs> yeah, but, we, yeah, but we want your name on it. We want your name on it to say that you, you clearly understand what we've got to do but, here because you can pull the trigger. I, I, I assure you, I am, I am very supportive of the work that is taking place and I would encourage people to... Uh, what that would do would effectively ban half our newsroom and, and some of the most significant people in it um, from participating in it. They wouldn't be able to be on social media where we communicate the most, which would be a, a, a pretty big pretty big change for us. And th- that extends to a couple of people, right? That's our National Affairs Editor, Austin Pollock. He basically runs half the life production and we're live every single day on the hour, every hour. Treasurer Jim Chalmers has handed down this year's budget for the 2024-25 financial year. There's problem number one. That would be a a 
pretty big loss for us. Um, our political editor, Roman McKinnon, who's been with us for a while now, he'd also have to go. And he actually interviewed Scott Morrison and Anthony Albanese in 2022 before the federal election. He'd be gone. Mr Albanese, it's Roman McKinnon here, federal political reporter. Uh, you said at the start of the campaign that you're not Scott Morrison and don't run away from press conferences. Yet days later, you walked out of a pre- press conference, rather, just eight minutes in. While journalists continued to ask you questions, did you break your promise? Not at all. I've, uh, I, 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 I never said I'd, I'd ask. Um, there's a couple others as well. Maggie Perry, our election reporter, she, you know, is with us for all the election nights um, and plenty of other election previews as well. Gone as well. Um, what are you expecting? Well, I really can't see any pathway for a Labor majority or anything like that at this point. I think the Liberals might... If this ban went ahead, right, you would have our 15-year-old reporters would be off Twitter where we communicate most of the time and that's where we organise things, that's where we plan our live coverage, that's where we plan election coverage, they'd be gone from that. And also, they wouldn't be able to interact with any of our viewers, which is really important because Twitter is one of the largest places... Um, we have a following. It's where a lot of these reporters um, post breaking news and we're able to get that out. And it's just quite an extraordinary proposal because it's not just talking about taking kids off Instagram, TikTok and Twitter, but it's talking about banning from YouTube. And when Six News was started, and mind you, for the first you know year or so, it was the uploads were under parent supervision. I will stress that. But I was 11 when the YouTube channel started. There would be no Six News if this ban was in place Um, a couple years ago. So let me get this right. One of your reporters can interview the Prime Minister for your social media channels, and yet the Prime Minister is saying, yeah, no, we don't trust you on social media. It is pretty weird. It is pretty bizarre. Um, And look, I mean, the Prime Minister, when we had him on just before the election where he was elected, um, you know, he said he would come back on Six News if he was elected, you know, but he's praising us for our work. Mind you, I was 14 at the time of the interview as well. He's praising us for our work, but you know, he just doesn't think that we're, we're, you know, mature enough to have a Twitter account or a YouTube account. It, it just it, it just makes no sense when you scratch the surface. I mean, to give you a bit of pushback on that, some people might hear this and go, oh, well, you know, Leo Puglisi is just a media baron speaking for, from his own self-interest here. Well, maybe I am, but also, like, I, I, I have no personal stake in it in the sense that I'd be banned with this proposal and... I will, of course, say that these 15-year-old reporters we have, um, they will be 16 soon-ish. But in general, it's just a a bizarre proposal. And when I think about, mind you, of course, you know, year seven and eight for me, starting high school, it was remote learning. That has changed things, you can say, for better or worse in terms of social media and use and the amount of time people spend uh, online. Um, But, you know, I just can't imagine what it would be like if I didn't you know, have Instagram at that age because, you know, using a boomer phrase, kids these days, they don't communicate via phone calls or even just text messages. We chat via Instagram or or some do via Discord or whatever. And it is 2024, social media interaction, interactions and communication, that is normal for us. Even though I know the prime minister said he wants kids to to act in, in normal ways. You can have, you know, your outdoor activities. You should have your outdoor activities. You can have all that without banning kids from communicating with each other on Instagram or just having a social media profile. If the age limit's 13, right, and with the current restrictions they have, which is just enter your birth date or click are you over, insert age here, depending on the site, that doesn't work. You can take that from experience. That doesn't work. Um, The only other way you could make it work is if you put in a lot of ID and a lot of Um, information that all users would have to have in. Now, I don't see that happening either, given there are plenty of understandable privacy concerns and safety concerns with giving all your data to Twitter at the moment, which seems to be falling apart on its best days, or, or just any site. And again, I just don't think it's worth all that effort to ban from these platforms, when, mind you, there are so many other initiatives that you could put in place that could work here in terms of making sure kids are safe without having to ban them. Because I guarantee you a ban will only spur them on, especially, especially if we're thinking a bit more specific, for a 13 or a 14-year-old who who is banned, 
for at least a year until they turn 16 or, or whatever. And you just think, well, they, they've just had it taken away from them. It, it just, it, it's not going to work. After the break, the political strategy behind raising the age. This year, the Saturday paper celebrates 10 years as Australia's leading independent newspaper. In that time, it's built a peerless reputation for quality journalism, for telling stories that are ignored elsewhere. It's the essential account of the week in politics, culture and news. When you read the Saturday paper, you don't need to read anything else. Subscribe today from just $2.10 per week. Visit thesaturdaypaper.com.au slash subscribe. The Saturday Paper. The whole story. As a a 7am listener, you're already familiar with many of the journalists who work for The Saturday Paper. For a limited time, subscribe to Australia's leading independent news source, The Saturday Paper, and you'll receive The Saturday Paper's stainless steel coffee cup, made in collaboration with Fresco, for free. Subscribe from just $2.10 a week. Simply visit thesaturdaypaper.com.au forward slash offer. Leo, it feels like this story about raising the age of kids on social media is everywhere at the moment. Where does it come from? Why are we even having this discussion right now? Look, we, we had seen this develop for a couple of days, right? The the South Australian Premier, Peter Malinowski, has really kicked it off. He's proposing um, a bit more moderate, which is under 14's ban, which is, you know, barely a change from what it is now. And it's not about being a troglodyte or anything, I, but I think it's about making sure that, you know, for children under the age of 14... They're not getting access to these platforms where we know it's doing them harm. And then for- Look, we have seen a pretty big increase in this conversation in the media and politicians over the past week, especially in a lot of the News Corp newspapers. News Corp Australia is launching a new national campaign aimed at protecting young Australians from the dangers of social media. The Let Them Be Kids campaign is called. It's a good thing to have on the headlines, a big campaign launched by all the newspapers. That gets clicks. That's why it was also on radio and you've got the, the 36 months website. Now, a good mate of mine and uh, radio broadcaster, Michael Whipper Whipfley, has gone on uh, a bit of a rampage, which I'm loving. It's called 36 months. He wants to increase the age restriction of kids getting on to social media from 13 to 16. That's why you get Anthony Albanese on to endorse it. And then that gets a lot more attention. It got my attention. Um, a lot of it, of course, is coming from post-pandemic, right? We, we've had all these discussions about the impact of being online too much um, in, in 2020 and 2021. And look, I don't doubt that either. I think, though, there is a bit of confusion and, and a mixed conversation about the differences between kids spending too much time inside and online and kids being addicted to a certain social media platform or kids you know, being unsafe on social media platform. In some ways, they are different conversations. But again, when you scratch the surface, there are just so many problems with it. Um, and it, it again, there are just so many other ways that you could protect kids through social media and help keep them safe. Education, of course, is a big thing. And of course, education goes both ways, right? We're talking about parents in this conversation. We'll educate parents. So many parents are, are digitally illiterate. So are mine, to be honest. Leo, why do you reckon so many politicians are throwing their weight behind it? Like, what's in it for someone like Anthony Albanese? Why would they back it? Well, look, it's a good way, again, to say that you're doing something uh, in terms of uh, supporting uh, parents. It's a good way to say you're protecting kids, um, you know, and mind you, in terms of the people who would be banned by it, well, they're not voters yet. And so it's a nice way to say that you're doing all that. It, It gets you a good lot of attention. Mind you, I have seen pretty much every government minister in the book and premier talking about this over the past few weeks. It's getting a lot of attention. It's getting a lot of opposition attention as well. It's a good way to, of course, try to get the opposition on side and and pass something through easily. But again, I'll I'll just backtrack into what I said before. It is just a good way to say that we're doing something, even if it might actually not be. Because what are you going to do when the the fourteen year old who was banned signs up with a different birth year, and still can access the harmful material that you're talking about stopping, again, it's not logical. Anyone who knows, you know, teenagers will tell you that they will be spurred on by being told that you can't do something, or you can't access this, or you can't have an account on that. I think the part of this that isn't in dispute is that there are some really serious and significant harms to young people's mental health from different social media platforms. 
And of course, to various extents for various people. But Leo, you're someone who's pretty exposed on social media. And I wonder if you worry at all about the impact on your own mental health. Look, for me personally, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of, um, you know, nasty comments over the years, right? Uh, these are just the the haters and losers of Twitter, right? Um, look, there have been messages to kill myself. I've had a couple of those. Um, there's been some threats to go to my school. I do keep my school anonymous. Um, but there's just been general comments over like four years I've been on Twitter where it's either, um, and this extends from when I was 13 to when I, you know, now 16 going 17, comments mentioning genitalia, comments that are just generally inappropriate, comments about parents, just, you know, really weird, creepy comments. And it's just amazing how me reporting the news, you know, impartially, running Six News has managed to, you know, annoy so many people. It's 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 incredible. It's I, I don't, you know, completely understand why these people have such weird reactions. So look, I cop it all the time. I, I'm not I'm not saying it's taken a toll or anything like that. I, I feel like I'm again, maybe not the right word, but coping fine, right? And and so for me personally, I, I'm able to deal with it fine. But again, that goes back to what I said in terms of the fact that each child, each teenager reacts to a comment differently. A 17, 18-year-old could take an awful comment on Twitter a lot worse than a 14-year-old or a 13-year-old or a 15-year-old. It's all about the individual, which again, parents and their kids will only know that best. And so, yeah, you're right. It's not in dispute that there can be impacts on kids' mental health because of social media. I, I'm not disputing that myself but it really just is down to the individual which is why i don't see how a blanket ban could actually address it um, if we're talking about keeping kids safe because i i will remind everyone that there are kids who who feel more safe in a social media community maybe it's because they've got problems at home or, or problems at school and they they feel like they're able to be safe and expressive on on social media 15 16 year olds And I don't see how taking that away would help them. And again, especially if we're talking about an issue with their own family, it's not like they can just go to their family instead of social media in some of these circumstances, which again, it goes back to it. A blanket ban does not work. It will not work. Leo, thanks so much for your time. It's great to be here. The Saturday Paper's food editors are some of the country's leading chefs, including Andrew McConnell, Otama Carey, David Moyle and Karen Martini. Let them guide your cooking when you sign up to Schwartz Media's free weekly newsletter, The Food. It features the latest recipe from the Saturday Paper, along with a selection of seasonal dishes suitable for all cooks. Subscribe today at thesaturdaypaper.com.au slash newsletters. Also in the news today, administrators for the budget airline Bonza have been given a two-month deadline to try to sell it in a federal court hearing yesterday. Bonza's fleet of planes has remained grounded after the company unexpectedly cancelled all flights in April. It's since been revealed to be $110 million in debt and more than 300 staff face an uncertain future. And Lisa Wilkinson is seeking $1.8 million from Channel 10 to cover illegal fees in defending the defamation claim brought by Bruce Lerman against both the network and her. The presiding judge, Justice Michael Lee, said he hoped 10 and Wilkinson's lawyers could sit down with some, quote, yellow and blue highlighters and come to an agreement themselves. But Wilkinson's lawyers appeared unconvinced, saying they believe 10 had a reluctance to pay us anything. I'm Ashlyn McGee. This is 7am and we'll see you again tomorrow.